Oh man, look at them all, all over his plastron. They're in the top of his mouth. Oh. Our giant alligator snapping turtles are covered in leeches. So I've called on some friends to give us a hand because we don't want to get bit trying to get them off. And you don't get to come to Garden State Tortoise without being put to work. This is Dr. Plants. <laughs> he did not, he just warned me there are leeches in here. There are leeches in here, I put them purposely. Whoa! <laughs> All right. Go ahead, get them. That's it, there that's it, that's how you, you do it. Oh, you got him! <laughs> oh my God, he almost weighs as much as my mother-in-law. Look at his, look at that leech on his mouth. It is terrifying. Leeches can actually travel across land. So what's happening is we live out here in the wilderness. These things are finding their way to our ponds and going onto our turtles. Now in the case of a turtle that basks a lot, like a red-eared slider for an example, those animals have the capabilities of going out onto a log, a snag or a rock and letting themselves dry out and that will kill the leeches or cause the leeches to fall off. And alligator snapping turtles spend the vast majority of their lives completely tucked under water and that's why there are so many on him. They're not really causing him too much harm. They do experience this to some degree in nature, but since we've got friends here to help us, we're gonna actually use salt to start killing these leeches and getting them off Cheap Brody. So Jack here is gonna hold this massive turtle so that I can get a good shot at getting his underside here with all of these leeches, but he's also gonna tell us some fun facts about Chief Brody and alligator snapping turtles in general. Oh, all right, yeah. Yeah, well, in the river system that he's from, very high, uh, it's very clear, fast flowing, it supports an immense density of freshwater mussels. So he's from the Flint River in Georgia. And the alligator snappers there uh, belong to a distinct lineage and they primarily feed on freshwater mollusks as adults. And they have reduced hooks on their jaws and they have much broader jaws and proportionally wider heads for their body size. Uh, so, you know, so cows much more crushing musculature. Uh, and when they're crushing up their clams, they're just destroying them and swallowing them and pooping out like uh it's like pooping out gravel but that's what uh the old commercial trappers back in the day when they were harvesting alligator snappers in georgia they reported that almost everything in their gut was just crushed mollusks but of course they eat all kinds of other stuff as well um they'll eat fish they'll eat anything they get anything they can really get their mouth on but they got this real sensitive nose up here that they use to probe the bottom and they, as adults, they forage and move around a lot in their lure. So his lure is barely even, you barely even see it. As an adult, they don't really use that much. I want to point something out here that's pretty incredible. The whole time here, we're, you know, essentially manipulating this turtle, trying to help clear up the leeches on him. Jack's been holding him up. And you'll notice he's not really thrashing much. He is gaping his mouth. We've talked to you guys that, about that before, that that is their, you know, uh, display of threat. But these animals can't reach sideways. They can't reach back like the common snapping turtle. So we're not in really any danger here, unless one of us was not paying attention and we got a hand or a digit right in his biting range. What work that like people like you are doing is incredible because you guys are really helping to expose the truth about these animals because so many people will actually comment on our videos calling them monsters yeah, or, no. and they're not they're peaceful animals yeah but we need to get a measurement on it. yeah yeah so we're gonna call Greg Brashear right now from Greg's Turtle Haven and we're gonna see what their guesses are as to Chief Brody's actual measurement of his carapace here are we measuring his head too yeah i was gonna measure his head with okay. and the carapace i mean we can measure everything but the, cool. the midline of the carapace length and the head okay cool um can you lift him up a little bit i yeah. just want to try to get that rear rear foot here yeah well, when they're in the, they have this slide that's right whenever they live in clear water in the wild because they, that does happen a lot they, they'll get algae all over them sure and like yeah. mats of it yep it's more aesthetically pleasing uh, yeah when anything, <laughs> And the yellow coloration is like a sign of like a dominant male. Like oh, the, wow, cool. The brighter yellow, and they usually have a larger head. And uh, I mean, their head's their primary tool and weapon. So when males are, you know, fighting each other over territories, and, and if you're another male and you come across this bright yellow face, yeah. that's uh, like, oh crap, don't mess with this guy. You say, who's that handsome guy? Oh, I got the transport here. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. All right, so we got, we got Brody out. We just removed a ton of leeches from him, and uh, Jack's about to measure them. So, are you you gonna guess what you think he what he measures? Yeah. So, but I think I'm gonna say between 
between 560 and 570 for the Memphis line. Okay. And I think for headwind, I'm going to take between 175 and 180. So, what about you? What do you think? Uh, I'm going to guess 170 tops head width and 520, 515 CL. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with what Jack says. <laughs> <laughs> he's been in person. You know, he knows what he's talking about. He's been handling them all day. <laughs> Moment of truth. What is the measurement of this turtle's carapace and head width? So we can do head width first. I'm gonna have to you know stabilize him with my foot if that's not an issue. <laughs> I can help hold him if yeah. you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly 170. Wow, wow. 170. So I was right to the millimeter. <laughs> he right to the oh, millimeter. Yeah. Did you like secretly measure him before? No, we I, I've <laughs> I've seen so many of them, but and this is how you measure the midline. No, I was exactly right again. It's 517. 517. Okay, so 517 and 170. That's a pretty big head for how the length of his shell. Okay. Yeah. Big head for a small shell. <laughs> yeah, and he's got, and his head is, I don't know if Greg can see, but his head's completely yellow. Like, even underneath, he's like. I love that we're showing Greg with a phone. <laughs> I, I know, right? But he's yeah, also, like, I'm going to measure the smile. CW because the width of him is pretty wide. Yeah. Like, he doesn't look. He, he looks very like typical. a. Is that very you say? Typical. Very typical. You're going to have a long, narrow carapace, um, big head in proportion to the body, crushing plates. And then when they get old, they turn that yellow color, and then now he's got the yellow head, the yellow claws. Yeah. So, so he's got a, his carapace width is 428. So his width is 428 of the carapace. Okay, yeah, that's 428 and 570. Yeah. So doing the math, is that pretty much what we usually see? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's a, he's a typical... Like Flint River specimen. He's a typical right? Flint River specimen. That's pretty cool. Nice job, Brody. Make sure you guys head on over to Greg's channel, Greg's Turtle Haven. He's a plethora of knowledge. Him and Jack do monumental work with alligator snapping turtles and a bunch of other species. Thanks, dude. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, All right, yeah, talk yeah. to you soon. Thanks for letting us... Uh, Bye. Thanks for letting us look at it and measure. Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> I can't believe I guessed the head was like perfectly. <laughs> One of the best parts about today is I have not really had to lift this turtle once, and I have yet another buddy to help me put him back in the pond. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan, the turtle man, show us what you could do, Dan, because most people know you for diamondback terrapins. I can pick up turtle also. Big alligator snapper. He go back in pond now. Big boy. Be careful, Dan, don't yeah, fret. Be careful, Dan. I mean, I'm fine. I mean, I'm gonna post it if you do. <laughs> if I want, get bit. If you not. trip. Oh. <laughs> womp, womp. Silly you, I'm always tripping. Here you go, Pookie Badookie. Bye, Chief. Dude, what are you doing? All the bubbles. Oh, you fought it. Here you go, buddy. You're gonna wanna go that way. So Chief Brody is free of leeches right now. We got some accurate measurements on him, but pretty soon what we're gonna need to do is bring him back into our veterinarian to get an updated weight. We're not done here yet. We're gonna go see a lot of other animals around our property. So today's really just a day about having fun with friends. I don't get to see these guys that often, but it's really awesome that they're finally here. So we're just gonna hang out with the animals of Garden State Tours. Where is he? Did you guys find him? Yeah, he's right here. That's crazy. That's crazy. Look at this little man. Check out this guy. Casey named this guy the Punisher. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> His head is just solid white. That's crazy. But the carapace color. I mean, they're just different colors. This one's definitely way older. But with the Gulf Coast, the farther west you go, they get more tan and they okay. lose the white heads. But this is, you know. Dude, I'm able to do this, but with terrapins, and that's about it. <laughs> you would do terrapins. But I, these are these are beautiful. I didn't ask to be born this way. So with these Gulf Coast box turtles, this is the largest member of the terrapin genus. And you get a lot of different variation. That's something that I overheard you just talking about. So you've get, you get these ones with colorful shells and really white heads. 
Then you get darker shells and the blue heads. But what's interesting about this female is you can actually tell that she has over time, Florida box turtle influence. Yeah. She's got that terrapine bowri, which is the Latin name of the uh, Florida box turtle influence to her. She's got that dorsal stripe that's starting to break up. She's got a more heavily striped carapace and even her head markings are more reminiscent of the Florida box turtle. So at some point in time, you know, maybe grandma, grandpa, great grandpa, somebody had a little bit of Florida in them, yeah. you know. But it's really, uh, they call this area like the land of the giants. Yeah, they yeah, like they get mad. And even her size, she's still giant. Like, yeah, she's still, still huge. <laughs> Guarantee almost none of them have seen a turtle like the red dragon. Oh, okay, wow. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yeah, I yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, wow. you remember what this is? The red dragon. Yeah, that one's a... Uh, uh, isn't it? It's Flavo versus crossed with the is it Geomita? Geomita Japonica, yeah. 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 Geomita Yeah. But what's incredible. incredible about this turtle, he's made up of two different genuses, yeah. Geomita and Cora, but he's fertile. That's yeah, well, that's one. like, oh, man, yeah, go for it. them Asian species just get all, Serrata, they can all I like just when mix, they thought that's they can all just Yeah, well, you've got like Galbinifron, yeah. so you've got uh, Galbinifron's Pictorata that is a ridiculously and Peretti pretty in turtle. Central, Central Vietnam. The they go orange all through, on the and then, uh, that's insane. Yeah, and then you have Maremi's Reeves on yeah. starting to hybridize. Yeah, all those flavors. turtles hybridize, but this is like... This is a hybrid between two different species. And there's more and more of these starting to show up now. Some people purposely try to create these hybrids, but, you know, some of this stuff is occurring in nature, and it's, you know, basically evolution happening before our eyes because it's creating a more robust a that's brawny that's species because a lot of these animals species over species in Asia are critically yeah, endangered they're rapidly disappearing like and you know these hybrids are just more vigorous they're 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 just a bigger uh badder animal you know and you've got purists that don't agree with it and you got people that you know are for it but nonetheless regardless of what side you're on these turtles are absolutely stunning Western paint? No, uh, blades. Here you go, guys. You can herp right here in the backyard. Like this, yeah, like this I never need to go. You guys never. Like, this is, oh, this is like your my, kids this is my inspiration. Uh, I never. Jack, oh, why? This is the very first enclosure that we built. We bought yeah. this place. We actually built it in November of wow. uh, 2016. It was, it was, it was like a really mild fall, which was nice. Yeah, yeah. And we just went in here. She was pregnant, but she wanted to help dig the hole. Yeah. So it was like me, her, uh, her brother, her oh, dad man. helped a little bit, and we, we just dug this out, and we never made it really deep, but yeah. it's primarily mud, so the blanding's too. I bet it's isn't like a soft, muddy substrate. Do you have your spotted ponds still? No, no. I found a western. I am that's, that's for the Yucatan box now. Gotcha. It, it didn't retain the water enough for. Uh, actually, a lot of people that watch our channel have been asking. Um, about the old spotted turtle pond. It's now been converted to a box turtle area because it uh, during the winter, if we do get a harsh enough winter, it freezes too solid and the turtles are in danger. So the spotted turtles have been moved to a different uh, habitat and you saw us build that toad ranch enclosure. Uh, and it's just more suitable for a box turtle habitat now. Oh, I love that. Yeah, this was, the, I, I, this I draw inspiration from. I look at that video where you built it frequently. It was so awesome and, uh, at first. It was so yeah, at yeah. first. Yeah, I've had those, those ponds be at first. No, this, this one's perfect. This, this, this perfect. one's interesting because like it really perfect. did get carried away. Dude, it's a bog. Like, yeah, it, but it really like the blandings are so happy in here. This is see them. perfect. Yeah, they're coming are trudging they coming through. Oh, they're hungry. Yeah, they're hungry. Yeah. You can tell a, a blanding's turtle. Their face. Yep. Yeah. The males get the mustache. The females have the stripes. Oh, cool. Here she comes. She just laid her second clutch of the year, so she is done for 2024. How on earth are you keeping track of that? Cameras. Yeah, I did that. And they're terrible. They're, they're messed up. No. That's uh, strawberries. They'll go nuts over them. Oh, come here, mama. Oh, big awesome. sexy. Oh, she pretty. Look at all this duckweed too. Yeah, that's awesome. I love duckweed. I want to smoke it. He's loving it though. That's so cool. <laughs> he loves that sand. He's loving it. Yeah. 
So we're wrapping up here after having an awesome day, having Dan, Jack, and Jaren over here. It's, I don't get to see these guys often, like I said, so it's really amazing that they were here today. And right now, we've just taken out Swift, who is our rescued Sonoran Desert Tortoise, to get some free time out here, interacting with everybody. Guys, make sure you check out everybody. You can check out Jack on Instagram. You can check out Dan on that platform, as well as YouTube, and of course, Jaren, Dr. Plants on YouTube. Amazing people, good friends, awesome to have have him here. Chief Brody as well, he's free of leeches for now and he is very healthy and it's really exciting that we got some measurements on him finally. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.